Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Voltaire said, It is difficult to free fools from the chains they revere. In 1969, Barack Obama was eight years old and doing all the things you'd expect him to be doing. He was playing basketball in Indonesia and perfecting his pronouns. Meanwhile, Stanford University's Paul Ehrlich, the United Nations, and the New York Times were discussing poisoning the food and water of third world countries. The United Nations thought this was a good idea to prevent overpopulation. Then in 1971, the same Paul Ehrlich and John Holdren of Berkeley wrote a paper warning about global cooling. They said that the burning of fossil fuels might cause a new ice age. This paper was significant because John Holdren later went on to become Barack Obama and Joe Biden's science advisor at the White House. By 1974, the United States was very short of energy, and it took a very long time to fill up your car at the gasoline station. A year later, Barack Obama's future science advisor said, The United States is threatened far more by the hazards of too much energy too soon than the hazards of too little too late. So by the time Obama was 14 years old, his future science advisor had determined that a shortage of energy was a good thing for America. Eventually, though, John Holdren gave up on the global cooling scam and switched over to the global warming scam, which he also said was caused by the burning of fossil fuels. But they've had some difficulties recently. The United States has been experiencing a lot of very cold weather during the winter. So climate alarmists have been very quick to state that cold weather does not disprove global warming. But hot days are somehow different. A few hot days force a climate reckoning. Last June, Oregon tied their all-time high temperature record, which was originally set twice in 1898. The Guardian said, Heat wave forces climate reckoning in Pacific Northwest. What this means is they want people to believe that the hot weather in the Pacific Northwest a year ago was caused by the public's use of low-cost, reliable energy. They want people to confess and repent of their fuel sins. Since the early 20th century, Cedar Lake, Washington has had 209 days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Almost all of them occurred before the year 2000, but during June 2021, they had three very hot days. Climate experts say that these three hot days were caused by climate change. The trend of June temperatures in Cedar Lake, Washington is down quite a bit since the beginning of the 20th century. But experts say that three hot days last year are proof of global warming and man's carbon sins. I predicted the scam on Twitter on June 27, 2021. Tomorrow, Portland and Seattle will experience a few hours of very hot downslope winds coming from the east, which the press will describe as unprecedented heat caused by global warming. Towards the end of this video, I will discuss downslope winds a little bit more. This climate reckoning article in The Guardian was dated July 3, 2021. The two hottest July 3rds on record in the United States occurred in 1911 and 1901. July 3, 1911, terrific heat gripped states. Many records are broken and several deaths are reported. General over country. On July 3, 1901, the New York Times reported that more than 200 people died in New York City alone from the heat. On July 3, 1911, every single U.S. state was over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and 31 states reported temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Missouri and Iowa both recorded temperatures over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's compare this to The Guardian's climate reckoning date of July 3, 2021. On July 3, 2021, there were 22 states over 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 9 states over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The United States was a lot hotter on July 3, 1911 than it was on July 3, 2021. But on July 3, 2021, The Guardian said that the heat was caused by man's carbon sins. July 3rd this year brought below normal temperatures to almost the entire United States. Today is July 4th, and the hottest July 4th in the United States also occurred in 1911. The Boston Globe reported 100 degree temperatures all over New England, including 112 degrees in Maine and 110 degrees in New Hampshire. Weather that hot in New England is incomprehensible now. 
The July 1911 heat wave killed thousands of New Englanders and sent many over the brink of madness. Some committed suicide to escape the heat. That same summer, the United Kingdom had a particularly severe heat wave and associated drought. In Paris, more than 40,000 people died from the heat that summer during a 70-day-long heat wave. In Germany, more than 1,000 people died from the heat during the summer of 1911. But The Guardian said that the three days of heat in the Pacific Northwest during June 2021 was caused by people using low-cost, reliable energy. However, as I mentioned on Twitter, the heat was actually caused by downslope winds. The most extreme downslope heating event in the United States occurred on June 17, 1859. During the afternoon of June 17, 1859, Santa Barbara, California warmed up 60 degrees to 133 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat only lasted a few hours, but cattle full in flesh perished in the fields and birds dropped lifeless from the trees from the withering blast. Temperatures from 120 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit were recorded all over normally cool coastal California. And then later that year in October, California had another extreme heating event. The temperature in October got up to 110 degrees along the coast. This was followed in December by the largest 24-hour rain ever recorded in that part of the country. It was estimated that one foot of water fell within 24 hours. The rivers overflowed the lowlands doing considerable damage. The starving cattle and sheep, unsheltered from the pitiless rain, chilled through, died by the thousands during the storm. Earlier that year, there was terrible flooding on the upper Mississippi River. And later that year, a storm off the coast of Wales destroyed 626 vessels and killed more than 600 people. So what was going on in 1859 which caused all of this extreme weather? Nobody blamed it on low-cost, reliable energy. The cause of it was probably the largest solar storm on record. The auroras were seen all the way to the equator and all the telegraph lines in the world were shut down. Telegraph operators couldn't touch the keypad because there was too much electricity flowing through the wires. So why are climate alarmists trying to blame reliable, low-cost energy for bad weather now? The first clue is here in 1975 when Barack Obama's future science advisor said the United States was threatened by having too much energy. This was at a time when the United States had far too little energy. The World Economic Forum has made it clear that they want the peasants locked up in their homes while they fly around on their private jets. So they made up this whole story about low-cost, reliable energy causing bad weather and told people that it threatens their very existence. But what actually threatens people is a lack of low-cost, reliable energy, like what happened in Paris during the summer of 1911. Had these people had air conditioning, their babies wouldn't have died. Globalists have done a great job enslaving people behind an irrational fear of low-cost, reliable energy. Toto remembers that July 4th is about escaping evil tyrants. Toki is Toto's son. He's one month old today. You can visit Toki and Upla on the web at realclimatescience.com.